This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is the Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, which is exploding as a podcast and a YouTube show, is with me today as my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Sarah's starting this hour off in Charlotte. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, so my husband and I are both full-time college students, and we're going to be seniors in the fall. And I was just wondering um, whether or not you would suggest we go ahead and pay off our student loan um, with extra scholarship money that we're expecting to be refunded to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, no. Uh, your husband and you, changes the conversation a little bit, you're both going to be seniors mm-hmm. in the fall, so you got one year left. Uh-huh. And how is the fall, how's the last year for both of you being paid for? All scholarships? Yeah, so after we got married, we qualified for more financial aid. And uh-huh. so the scholarship money that we had was more than what it cost for tuition. Okay. How much more? Um, for this um, upcoming school year, we're expecting about thirteen thousand per semester. On top of your yeah, yeah. your expenses. And how, and how are you eating? Um, well, my husband works full time as well. Oh, okay, cool, very good. And so, what does he make? Um, about thirty. Okay, all right. Um, out of an abundance of caution, no, I would just pile it up. And wait okay. to wait to start your baby steps until graduation, because both of you will graduate okay. next year at this time, and both of you hopefully will embark on much better careers than either one of you have ever seen before. Agreed? Mm-hmm. So your pay should go up way up this time next year. Is that right? Right. Okay. Right. At that point, I want you to, have more than anything, added no more debt. If you have $26,000 okay. laying around... And have no more debt, and have two big jobs, and you start your debt. You start your baby steps. You're going to throw that twenty six immediately at the student loans, and the only thing you will have lost was how much you would have paid off between, or how much interest you would have saved between uh, now and uh, this time next year. And uh, really, you may not even be accruing interest yet. Are you? No, not yet. Okay. Well, we did for all of our student loans are from our freshman year. Yeah. Um, so we have interest all the way up until last year when they suspended that. Yeah, but uh, but uh, and it should go back on in September. So uh, I think that's when it comes back on, if I remember. So you're going to have a little interest with my idea, but that's okay. okay. I would rather the big thing is for Sarah and her husband to graduate with no more debt. And I want this cash as an insurance policy to graduate with no more debt. Then when you quote unquote, start your careers following graduation one year from now and you get the big jobs. Now we're going to really push play on the baby steps, get going hard on it. And we're going to clean out any cash we've got except a thousand dollars. It's not retirement money. We're going to throw it at your debts, which would obviously be your student loans and or any other debts you have. Don't take out any more debt. Use this 26,000 to ensure that that happens. That's the first goal. It's kind of a almost like the, the doctor's oath, the Hippocrat- Hippocratic oath. Do no harm. Right. Do no more harm yes. is what this is. Don't go, Just don't allow yourself to go further into debt. And that's a cool f- position to find yourself in that suddenly um, scholarship money falls from the sky. Yeah. That's outstanding. Yeah. Well, you went and got it. Yeah. That's good, too, yeah. which a lot of people just kind of wander along, don't even bother. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you quit going through school like you take too much Xanax, then you probably could. <laughs> people just wander through like they're in a haze. Yeah. And, and in, in her case, to her credit, they, they got married and went, hey, maybe there's some, oh, let's go get some money. I don't you know, know if I ever told you, Dave, the number of scholarship committees I've sat on that went un 
spent because we didn't have any applications for the money. This is internal scholarship money at the university where I was an administrator. So how would they have found that money? We would announce, please apply. No, no, no for but I mean, th- would they... Would they? Oh, so they should just know to go and apply. Well, donors will donate right a million dollars, right. and it and it rolls off the interest out of the endowment. And so right. there's a a thousand dollar scholarship here. Yep. And we would make announcement after announcement. Please apply for the scholarship. Here's a list of them. And that, where would they apply? They would go at online. the individual committee. No, you'd go online to a central place and write your um, for write any essay. scholarships available. Correct for at your, the university. And it's there's not only the university, but your particular college within the right, university, right? right? And they just we would sit there and say, well, we can't. We didn't even have an application for this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or one savvy student would apply for all of them, and then we'd have to have the hard cut. Do we give them all to one student, or versus yeah, let it sit there? Let it sit there in a crew again, right? So just like you said. It's easy to put all your eggs in that scholarship basket as a freshman, and then you take your foot off the gas. Man, if you look every year, man, you, it, it never ceases. Well, to and anytime something changes, up. like now we're like old married people and we're college students. Now that's a whole bunch of scholarships, right. which and is what happened with her. Somebody donated yeah. money for married, married students yeah. and which an is architecture program who fill in the blank, right? Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Zach is with us. Zach is in Phoenix. Hi, Zach. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks, guys, for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Really appreciate it. Hey, so I just need some big picture wisdom from you guys. Um, uh, I, I really want to pay off our house. Uh, I want to be completely debt free. Uh, and I have a rental property that, that produces really, really well. I've had this thought of selling that rental property, taking the proceeds, putting it on the house, which would still leave a little less than probably $100,000 on the house to pay off. Um, I guess my big picture vision with the rental property was to pay it off on a 15 year fixed and then utilize that to help cash flow my kids' college and other things. Um, but man, I've got this desire to just be, you know, completely debt free with the house and everything, but would love some input and some perspective on what you would do. Uh, what's your household income? Uh, about 130. Cool. How old are your babies? Uh, oldest is nine. We've got a nine, seven, five, three, and one. What do you owe on the rental? Uh, 150, 155. What's it worth? Uh, it would probably sell now for probably around 280. Okay. If you owed $100,000 on, right oh, yeah, you $100, on your house. Would you go borrow uh, another 150 on your house in order to buy this rental if you didn't own it? <clears throat> I would not. Then it's time to sell it. Okay. A good rule of thumb on stuff is if I wouldn't buy it again, it's time to get rid of it. That includes a boat. That includes, you know, just about any, any material item, certainly investments. And that keeps you from thinking about too many other things. So for whatever reason... And I think in your case, I can read your mail because you told me what it says. Um, the Your reason is I'd rather be out of debt than I would own this rental. But owning the rental is a good thing. But I'd rather be out of debt than owning this rental. So how do I solve this dilemma? When I reverse engineered it on you, you instantly went, oh, the debt thing's more important. Way more important. To me. Because you instantly answered it. And so that, you know, for the same reasons, you wouldn't do this. On baby step number one, huh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones as we talk about your life and your money. 
The Dr. John Deloney Show with new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on YouTube. Uh, It covers everything from anxiety to boundary issues to crazy in-laws to just wild mental health things. It's It's a really, really helpful and entertaining show. It's a lot of fun. I listen to it all the time. Not only because uh, I'm the CEO and it's my job to make sure stuff going out of here is good, but I just enjoy it. Well, I appreciate that. It's very good. So be sure you can tune in there. If you'd like to be on that show, uh, you can call him at 844-693-3291. You can email, and Kelly and the team will get back to you at askjohn at ramseysolutions.com. Askjohn at ramseysolutions.com. Or you can talk to him right now, 888-825-5225. Diane is in California. Hi, Diane. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic, Dave. What a great time to be able to talk to you. Thank you for helping me. My pleasure. How can we help? Well, we've owned our boutique real estate and property management business for over 40 years. I'm 68. My wife is 72. We're getting ready to sell it to a wonderful young man that I've trained for the last six years. We've talked to a business uh, broker, and he shared with us you take the average Net profit for the last four years, which is $96,000 a year for us, you multiply it uh, two times five, two and a half times, that gives us $240,000, and then we add back in our discretionary income and of eighty-four thousand a year. That gives us a value of three twenty-five. My question, Dave, is we're pulling out seven thousand dollars a month from this business. We're retired pretty much. We live four hours away from the business. And I can't take that three twenty-five and create seven thousand dollars a month if I sell it to this wonderful young man. Mm. So my question is Am I missing something? Um, I need uh, your... No, um, you're not missing it. I, but, you know, I, I don't disagree with your business broker much. Uh, the formula I use is a little bit more simplistic. Now, the 96, is that after both of you... Uh, wait a minute. You're not operating it today. Someone else is operating it. Yeah, we have a, 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 a broker manager. But you're absentee man owners. You do no work yes. in yes. the business. Yes. Right. The only thing we do is do um, balance, do a P and L statement every month on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that would be as if I bought it. I would have someone run it for me. Right. I live in Tennessee. I'm not going to day to day be involved in that. So an, an investor would buy it after all. See, when sometimes sometimes when someone's selling their own business, they work in the business, and we have to take their salary out of the net profit too what it would take to replace the manager. But in your case, you've already got a manager, so we don't have to take that out. So basically, you're making a hundred grand a year, 96 a year profit. And uh-huh. I would say if the buyer wants to make 25% on their money, it is worth four times that much. If the buyer wants to make 20% on their money, it's worth five times that much. So generally, a small business goes in a four to five cap of net profits and so i'm a little bit higher than your broker but not much he's got you at a high of about 400 with his ad back and um and my four times puts you at about 400 so that that is a fairly reasonable valuation process that the business broker used there um he used 325 as the but he value. added back the 85 no, the 325. The 325 includes the 85. And oh, also I think that's the, low. The young, yeah, and the young business broker, we're paying him $60,000 a year as a salary to run it. To run it. But you still, after that, you're, after that, you're netting 96 after you paid him, Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. So that, that, that business is generating an absentee investor. $96,000. So let's call it $100,000. So if I bought it for 400 and I got 100 back, I would be making 25% on my money. You see how that works? Yes. Yes. And if I bought it for 500, I'd be making 20% on my money. Okay. And you want to make over 20% buying a small business because it's a higher risk investment than say a mutual fund that might pay you 10 or 12%. 
Absolutely. So, Absolutely. you know, so usually a small business is going to go in the 25, 20 range. So I think it's worth north of 400. But uh, and now how can he pay you? Let's go back to that solving that. Yeah, have you hired the business broker yet? Are you are you obligated to that person yet? We're not obligated per um, legality, but per um, he's the one who's been running it. I trained him. Oh, no, 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 no. Who's, who gave you the valuation process? Oh, just, oh the business broker. Not signed. We have not signed a contract, nothing. Okay, so he just said this is how you do it. And, and, but, okay, yes. good. Because you're going to sell it to your guy is, is the goal. And you don't need a broker to do that. You already got your buyer. Right, but we don't. He doesn't never, have any money, though. sell businesses. Yeah, but no, 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 no. He doesn't have any money. Your your guy that's running it is who you want to sell it to, right? Right. Okay. So you don't need a broker to do that because you've already got your buyer. That's true, but we've never sold a business before, so we. Well, you just need an attorney to help you do the asset transaction, is all, by California okay. law. That's and that's not worth near as much as paying a business broker a commission for making his sale that he didn't make. Right. He already agreed to do it for five percent, but you're. That's I a hear little your stiff. Point. Yeah. Because he didn't do anything except the transaction. Okay, so you pay an attorney to do the transaction. Get 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 your business attorney. Talk to him uh, uh, about that. Now, here's a way we can structure it. What if uh, the young man that is running it, you're paying him sixty now. Correct. What if he agreed to say, "I'm going to continue to once I'm the owner, I'm going to continue to live on sixty." And all profits in excess of that go to uh, the you guys, the sellers, until we reach four hundred. Then it would take him well, four. It would take him four years to pay you out. That's an idea, some kind of an installment sale like that. But however, we thought I think he can come up with the cash. Oh, his okay. Parents. But then the question comes back to you: I can't make on four hundred even. I can't make a hundred on my four hundred. That's right. Yeah. Right. But you've got less risk and you're out of the business. Why are you selling it if it's so great? Because we were old. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not. Uh, 20 years from now, you'll be old. Uh, okay. Well, you know, Dave, we had a good run. We've owned it for over 40 years. Yeah. And Here, here's the thing. Been- you want a little less risk and a little less hassle in the golden years. Exactly. And so yeah. you're going to make you're going to make less return for that. Exactly. Exactly. So what can you make on four? What can you make if you invest 400? You can make about 40 a year. Yeah. 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 And that, and you're going to get 40 a year, but you're, but it's a lock. You got almost zero. You got compared to what you have now, you got almost zero hassle and zero risk. And no more responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Hassle factor. Yeah. Yes. You got it. You, you, you you have to, you have to keep your finger on the pulse of that. And that requires muscle tension in your hand. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they got arthritis already. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a hoot. Y'all are fun. <laughs> but Dave, because of you, we're debt free. Yeah, I didn't pay it off. You so, did, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all okay. are awesome. Hey, yeah, go. I, I, I think you accept four hundred, um, and get work out of a deal with the kid. Let him buy you out, and um. And, and, and you're just going to make less on your money. And the, the reason yeah. is, is that you have less risk and less hassle. Yeah. Thank and you clarified it, Dave. Thanks a million. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> That's how it's done. I love it. Dave. I don't know when you were going to enter that conversation, but I... I, I was. That's my favorite spectator sport right there. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a duo. Oh, my gosh. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey folks, I got a great option to help you pay for your education. The Army National Guard. The Army National Guard believes you are the next greatest generation because you have proven that even in adversity, that you have what it takes to succeed. That's why they offer benefits like tuition assistance, career training, and a paycheck to help you avoid debt. No matter what your goals are, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, Dan and Julie are with us from Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, good. good. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. How much debt have you guys paid off? 49804 Did you say 29 or 49? 49. 49. 49. 49804 I'm going to call that 50 okay? <laughs> and uh, how long did it take you to pay off this 50000 18 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 96000 to 98000 Okay, cool. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm a veterinary assistant. Oh, good. Very cool. What kind of debt was the 50K? Uh, we had two car loans, um, some uh, roof on the house, mm -hmm. and some credit card debt. No student loans? No student loans. We paid wow. those off already. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're kind of bopping along about normal. How long have you guys been married? 13 Th years. 13 years. So after 13, after 11 years... All of a sudden, this wasn't okay. What happened? We were tired of living paycheck to paycheck, and we were struggling to make ends meet. We actually got to a point where we actually had to ask family for money to pay the mortgage. Ugh. And it, That's our, depressing. It, it was terrible. So we actually, our friend Angie had told us about FPU and the Total Money Makeover book, mm -hmm. and on one of our side gigs, we actually um, listened to the book, mm -hmm. and um, we realized that our our church was offering the class. Oh, so you went to Financial Peace University at your church? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. We took the class and we just ran with it. Wow. Okay. So that was the whole, uh, you know, obviously um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, right? Yes. Yeah. And so sure. you, you walk into the class and boom, it's game on. Yeah. So how far into the class? Both of you were open to this? We were tired of it. Both of you. Yeah, definitely. You just look at each other yes. going, we got to do something. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so you walk into the class ready to go. And was it first class game on or it took a little while? First class was game on because we actually had started a little bit before. Oh, you had the total, total me makeover before that. Yes. Yeah, right. We had, okay, we had listened to the book. So yeah. we, we had kind of started, but not really fully into it the way that. Yeah, you knew how countercultural I was going to be. It didn't shock you. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, you didn't have to. You got over the being weird part yes. before you got there. Okay, yeah. very cool. So I'm, I'm always interested in my favorite part of these is, is that first conversation. Who came to who? How'd that go? I think you came to me, right? I think I came to you because our, my, our friend Angie was talking to me about it. Okay. And then I... I had to talk to so him. So you got the courage. I had to talk to him. So you got the courage, and she brought it up, and you said, I'm, I'm all in. Let's just do something. Yeah, I, I just never really had a game plan, I don't think. You know, just kind of kept going and doing my own thing and never had any, you know, real, this is what we should do. So it, it wasn't so much as, you know, it's just a lot of bad decisions, not knowing what to do. And yeah. so I was open who was it. doing the bills? Both of us. At the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you were, you're talking about it already, mm -hmm. but it just yeah. talked about how bad it sucked. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What, what, was, sure. what was the dark night of the soul when one of you had to call the relative? Oh. Uh. It was my grandpa. Uh. And I, it really stunk. Yeah. Mm. But he was more than gracious and gave us the loan and we actually paid it back. And yeah. so it was very nice. And it said never again. Never again. Yeah, never. That feeling. Mm -hmm. oh. Just the peace we have now is just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And he, even if he wasn't, you know, it doesn't matter how gracious he is because it still happens in your stomach. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's dark night of the soul. That's a good way to say That's, it. <laughs> it's just when you have nowhere else to go. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Visa won't yeah. even talk to you. Right. And you got to go to granddad. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't, yeah. Wow. And you got to pay that off during this time. 
Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? You're professionals. You have done it. Um, I'd say sticking to a budget, you know, having a plan and really sticking to it and being intentional about where your money goes and just being mm-hmm. – Making that important and making it an important part of your life. Mm -hmm. I think talking about it, communication, we really, I think we talk almost every day about our budget, Mm -hmm. about money, just how happy we are, where we are. It's nice that the conversations are good now rather than, you know, (laughs) (laughs) where's the money coming from? It's like, all right, now, you know, what can we do? Yeah, it's a little less freak out now. Exactly. Yeah, I hear you. Yep. I hear you. So what's, what, how has this improved your marriage? Uh, just the communication, I would say, and not being stressed out about money and being able to really enjoy it rather than worry about it. I, you know, I never, I've never contextualized it that way, but there's a difference between having a conversation about what do we want to do versus here's what we have to do. Mm-hmm. That's two yeah, right. totally yeah. different yeah, heart rates sure. when you're having that conversation, yeah, yes. right? Huh, that's fantastic. Yeah, one of them is dreaming and the other one's freaking it's out. It's treading water, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That is a different, different process. Well, who were your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? Our friend Angie. Oh, yeah. good. I'm loving <laughs> Angie at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Angie's and, my head recruiter over there. Exactly. I like her. Yeah. And then our um, our FPU coordinators, Mike and Tim. Ah. They were really. Yeah. They kind of kept with us throughout the process, and we were always emailing them saying, hey, we did this, you know, and they were all very excited for us, so yeah, helped us stay motivated. Wow. Very cool. Good job. And you don't get that from your – Electrical engineer buddies who are asking, you, why are you keep bringing your lunch, man? Let's all go out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you brought the kiddos with you. What are their names and ages? Let's get them in the shot. We have Emily, who is nine, uh-huh. and James, who is seven. All right. So have they been practicing? Are they involved in this they whole have. thing? Yes. Yep. So they yep. know about a debt-free scream. They know what happened. Their lives have been changed because their mom and dad took control. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm proud of y'all. Thank you. Very, very well done. Mm-hmm. We got a copy of uh, the Legacy Journey, which is the next step in your journey as you move on from Baby Steps 2 and 3 and really start to build some wealth and increase your generosity. I'm so proud of you. Thank very, you. very well done. And thank you. thank you to your church for teaching Financial Peace University. It's a yes. big deal. It's a very big deal. Very cool stuff. Also, a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away because the uh, audio book got you started. So now you can get somebody started with a hard copy. So uh, pay it forward a little bit. Good good job, guys. Very yeah. well done. Yeah, and don't ever lose perspective that you've set them up to not experience what you guys did. And that's legacy. That's reclaiming those that those bad decisions from the past and turning into the road that they can walk on. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes. Good complete for Complete family tree change. Yeah. All right. It's Dan and Julie, Emily and James. Ready to go? All right, fifty thousand dollars paid off in eighteen months, making ninety six to ninety eight. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're debt free. <laughs> <laughs> This is how it's done. Oh, man, I love that. That is so, so cool. That's the coolest, man. You know, Financial Peace University is a part of Ramsey Plus. You hear hear us talk about it all the time. Your income is your greatest wealth-building tool. When you get out of being held hostage like that, it changes everything. You can get out of debt. You can take back your income. You can get your marriage in a whole different place, different kinds of conversations. Where do you start? Financial Peace University is now part of what's called Ramsey Plus. It's a membership, and you get access to all the tools, including that class, to change your life forever with our best-selling online courses, including Financial Peace University. Listen, this stuff actually works. The average debt paid off in the first 90 days is $5,300. The average person saves $2,700. That is an $8,000 change in position on average in 90 days. You can get out of debt. You can save. You can free up your income and you can do it faster than ever. Start with a free trial. You can have access to the class they took at Ramsey Plus today. Text TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL to 33789. You know, when I started teaching Financial Peace University almost uh, 25 years ago in a bad suit with an overhead projector in a hotel meeting room, I had no idea that it was going to end up on video someday and that someday it would be on the 
Internets. Internets. And that someday a family from Ohio would get in their car. car and drive to Nashville to stand on this stage in front of me with their two kids and scream they were debt free. What a legacy you built, man. But pretty cool for them. I'm so proud of them. They're heroes. They are. Millions of families have decided to take control of their own destinies. I'm so proud of all of them. That's awesome. This is very, very cool. This is The Ramsey Show. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Kevin is in Philadelphia. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hey, Dave. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Yeah, I had a quick question. Me and my wife, we're newly married. We got married earlier this year. Congratulations. Paid off. Thank you so much. Uh, we recently just paid off about thirty thousand dollars in student debt um so you know that is so good good uh, but right now we're in steps four five and six we also have the emergency fund um and we we're wondering how much to allocate to retirement because we also plan to get a house soon in good. a couple of years good for you how old so right are you now, yep 24 she's 25 excellent way to go man you got a you got a game plan you're rolling it out i'm proud of you so yeah, some people, we call that baby step 3B. You've probably heard that, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So once you've got your emergency fund in place, that's when people start saving for their first home. Sometimes people also start saving for retirement for simultaneously. And sometimes they put off baby step four a little while and put 100% of their savings into the house fund until they, so they can get there a little quicker and delay starting their retirement fund a little bit. Either one is fine. I don't want you to delay starting it for 10 years, but delay starting it for one year or two years is okay if you put nothing in there. So Mm -hmm. anywhere from zero to 15% going into your retirement savings right now while you're on 3B is just fine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, it makes sense. What's your household income? Uh, About 92,000. Way to go. Wow. Man. So how much do you think you're going to save? Uh, so right now we have 27000 saved, uh, and then we have ten grand in a separate account for the emergency fund. Um, and we're not sure exactly. That was my next question. How much can I actually afford uh, for a home? Mm-hmm. Uh, so based on the income, and uh, it's probably going to increase um, you know, maybe on average a little bit every year. But we're wondering because we're looking at homes now and Maybe if you have some guidance to how much we should be spending yeah. on a home. Well, run run some numbers with your real estate agent or with an online calculator out on a 15-year fixed rate loan, and you'll be at 275 3%, somewhere in there right now uh, on your interest rate, uh, and where your payment is no more than one-fourth of your take-home pay. Now, take-home pay is after taxes, not after health insurance, not after other deductions from your paycheck, but just take taxes out of your paycheck and call that your take-home pay. And and then say, all right, this is what we're going to bring home, and about a fourth of that on a 15-year fixed will keep you in a really, really affordable uh, 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 situation. And a safe situation. A safe, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you'll, you'll have margin to be able to do other things uh, like getting 15% going into your retirement, like when you have kids, you can add your uh, emergency fund to that and, um, and so on. Joel is in Portland, Oregon. Hey, Joel, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I'm, I am very um, predictable. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Um, so I co-own a business with my brother-in-law and um 
I bought into it a little over a year and a half ago, and we uh, we doubled the business in the first year, and we're doubling it in the second year as well. But uh, he wants to sell his half of the company, and um, I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to go about that. And uh, if you think it's a good deal or what I should uh, look out for, is there, and, uh, is there a personality? About it properly. Is there a personality issue? Do y'all not get along anymore? Is he just is he setting you up, no, or does he just want to get out? No, we we work together uh, fantastically, um, and uh, both he and I agree that we were the only people that we uh, have ever wanted to do business together. And uh, it's been fantastic so far. He just does not enjoy the industry uh, that we're in. And so he wants to do something different. He's also an entrepreneur, and he just wants to try new things and uh, do something different, try something new, uh, challenge himself. And so as an entrepreneur, I totally get that. I support it. Um, So we're just trying to figure out... Uh, the best way to go about it on uh, on our end. That's about a healthy and, way to come uh, at it. I like it. So say, yeah, why do you why other. do you want to yeah. stay in it? Well, I have uh, almost four kids, <laughs> and um, and my wife and uh, and I. It's really important for um, her to stay home with our kids and for um, for us to raise them, and so. There's that. It's uh, it's a good business. Um, we make we make a good amount of money. We're near our family, and we love our church. And um, it it definitely has huge uh, growth potential. And okay, what you know, was uh, I, what I was the net pro- the- what was the net profit uh, in, uh, or what will it be in 21? Let's say. Um, the f- well. Before taxes and expenses, we're looking to get probably close to three fifty to four hundred. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Expenses uh, are come out before you make a profit. Expenses, we're probably less than forty thousand, maybe fifty thousand in expenses. Okay, taxes. I'm not worried about. I'm just saying. I mean, if the business has business taxes, that's fine. We can take those out. But yeah. what is the net? profit that the two of you will pay taxes on you'll pay income tax on in 21 uh probably about 350,000 okay so 175 is your half 175 is his half is that is it split 50 50 yeah okay and how are how is he proposing to be bought out and what does he want he wants a hundred and forty four thousand over a four year period. Um, so basically nine thousand a quarter over four years. That's awful. For him or me? <laughs> For him. I was gonna say, man. That's worth it's worth like ten times that. Yeah. That's not enough. Um, Are you sure you're making yeah. what you think you're making? Uh, yes. Why does he want such a small percentage of this company? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think part of it is we're our family, so he yeah. doesn't. He doesn't. I'll want give you another like proposal. I'll give money. you another. Let me give you another proposal. Okay. Wait a minute. Did you guys take uh, salaries out of that before you got to three fifty? No. You made no we're, money. We're, so you you're both working. You're both working well, there, and doing what? What do you do there? So we uh, the the way we have it broken down is like we have a very small salary check. How much? Uh, that goes into our accounts every month, and then we do how much dividend checks once a month. I know how much. Uh, like twenty seven hundred bucks. Okay, so if I bought this business from you guys and both of you were gone, what would I have to pay managers to replace the two of you to do what you do? Well, we're both out in the field as well, so we're basically well, what I, doing quick all Quick answer, the quick answer. You're running out of time. Okay. How much? We probably, to be worth it for someone, 
probably be probably about four to five thousand a month. Okay, let's call it sixty grand. Well, let's call it a hundred grand. Okay. All right, let's take a hundred thousand dollars to replace each one hundred and sixty each. Yeah, sixty each. Okay, so let's call it one hundred and fifty off of three fifty. That's a two hundred thousand dollar profit. Now his one hundred and forty four doesn't sound so bad because his half is one hundred thousand. Um, I suggest you pay him uh, two hundred thousand over two years. One hundred thousand a year for two years and buy him out in cash. You got plenty of profit to do that with, and you still make a great living. You preserve your relationship with your brother. Yeah, I pay him one hundred thousand dollars a year for two years and be done. That'd be a good deal for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer for The Ramsey Show. This episode is over, but if you heard about an event, product, or service and didn't have a chance to write it down, don't worry. We list everything you've heard about during this episode in the podcast show notes section or head to theramseyshow.com. Thanks for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Five two two five. Danny is going to start off this hour in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Hi, Danny. How are you? Hi, gentlemen. I'm uh, doing great. I'm a little starstruck. Uh, Dave, I got to say, I've I've listened to you for years and started when I took Financial Peace University, and um, my buddies give me a hard time. But whenever we go out to get a bite or something, they say, uh, I don't know, is that Papa Dave approved? Oh, that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're honored right, well, to have you, sir. How can we help today? All right. So the condensed version, I'm wondering if I should buy a house that I do not want. <laughs> so a little backstory: My wife and I have been looking for a house for the past year. Um, financially, we're doing, we feel prepared as much as we can be. We're in uh, baby step four. We have a good chunk of change set down. Um, there is just no inventory in our area. And I finally broke today when I got a call that a house we put a really competitive offer on. Um, it went uh, above. It went uh, no inspection. It went guaranteed their, uh, their offer price. Um, and, and so just feeling frustrated. So I don't know if we should just keep waiting. Uh, our landlord is selling our, the house we live right now, and so we're going to be um, kicked out in uh, August. So we're a little worried. You know, do we – find a place to rent and pay more than what a mortgage would be, or do we settle on a, on a townhome or something really small that we just don't like? Hmm. I well, just went through this. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so what's the answer? No. No what? Don't buy a house you don't like. Yeah. Don't do that because you're going to wake up in 12 months or 24 months. 12 hours. 12, yeah, 12 so hours. I don't like this house. Um, oh, wait, I never liked this house. What the yeah. heck did I do? And you're gonna, yeah. it's, it's like trying to date somebody that you know you don't have a future with, and you just think, <laughs> I'm going to, I'll change them. I'll change them. And, and I'll grow to love them. <laughs> that bathroom's not going to move in that house. It's, it's still going to be there. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this for you. Hey, yeah. listen, I just went through this. It was brutal. It's a frustrating experience in the market right now. It, it is. It really, really is. Yep. So this is your all's first home. Correct. And you're how old? Uh, I'm 28. My wife's 25. Every time I face something like this, I read a study like, gosh, it, probably 20 years ago, and it affects it affected my decision making paradigm ever since. Here's what the study said: it said that people who build wealth and become wealthy make decisions based on how it's going to affect them 10, 20, 30 years from now. People who are broke mm -hmm. make decisions based on how it's going to feel this weekend. 
Yeah. Thank God it's Friday. Oh God, it's Monday. Is what broke. <laughs> it's what broke people say. But rich people, when they get ready to buy a watch, they say, "Can I wear this for ten years, twenty years? Can I get some?" Or when call? they get ready to buy, they buy high. They buy expensive things sometimes, but they buy high value things that last. That's right. Poor people buy. Right. Uh, and broke people, and I've been both, but broke people buy stuff that looks good right now, but that's cheap as crap and falls apart, you know? And so and it's kind of the same decision-making thing. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, God, it's Monday. I'm going to blow all my money on the weekend because I'm a child. And so uh, emotionally. So the way I back up on something like you're looking at, when I'm frustrated and tired and feel boxed out by the market which is all the things you feel and it's your first house and ah, man we're going to pay more in rent we're going to move twice because i gotta go rent something and then i'll find something right after i rent something and all that then then you know uh you know so what what this tells you when i I pan back i go what's the best decision 10 years from now don't buy a house you don't like and man it's hard especially with my wife saying I just I want to, I need a home. Yeah, I've got two little kids running around. Yeah, um, it's real, real hard to be patient. Yeah, talk to your landlord and go. Hey, if I pay you a couple hundred dollars more a month, would yeah. you rent for me for six more months? Yeah, buy yourself a little time. That's right. And um, or go somewhere for a weekend. Just go on a, a quick little getaway. Do something just to kind yeah. of clear the deck, wipe the white, yeah. uh, erase the whiteboard, and you got to start over again. This is the worst possible time to feel like you're forced into buy something. Right. Because the market's gone bananas, meaning people have gone bananas. <laughs> they're nuts. Yeah. I mean, they're like running down the street and driving a stake in the yard. This one's mine. You know, it's crazy the way they're acting. And it's just a freaking house. Yeah. I mean, get, you can get you another one. There's one on every corner. Uh, but no, don't don't settle. Don't cheap out. Because if you buy some kind of crappy something, because that's what's available in this market. You know what it's going to be when you get ready to sell it? Something that's crappy <laughs> that's available in a hard to sell market. Yeah. That's you're gonna get stuck. Well, and beyond that, you tell I mean, when you buy an ugly house at a deal, and you know what it is when you get ready to sell it? An ugly house at a deal. <laughs> well, and you tell yourself all these uh, these fantasies, like we'll we'll just move those bathrooms, we'll build an add-on garage and yeah. get a new roof. None of that will happen. And you set yourself up for so much disappointment when you're there. It's such a good discussion, though, and that's why oh, we're yeah. leaning on it a little bit and giving giving a little bit more time because there's so much activity in the market. Oh, man. So many people are feeling this. Listen, if you feel like you're, you're, the temperature on your forehead is changing, mm-hmm. that's called house fever. It's back away. You, know, you need to go take a cold shower. Back away from the contract. <laughs> this is back you know, away. you're about to overpay. You're about to buy something. You're about to settle mm-hmm. for something you don't like. And that's everybody out there, man. You're just you're just an example of everybody that's walking around looking at houses right now. Uh, the opportunity to overpay is legitimate. And yes, moving twice. Uh, that's moving a pain twice in the butt. Sucks. But it's, you know, let me tell you, ten years from now, you won't even remember. It. No, you won't. Or you'll remember how bad it was, but it's 10 years later. Who cares? Yeah, we rented a house. We sold our house after bankruptcy. Our kids were in these private schools. We moved to another county to get in better schools, and we rented. The first time I'd ever rented since I'd owned. Okay. And I'd owned 1,000 pieces of property by then (laughs) and gone broke, right? Now I'm a renter. That kitchen in that rental house, it was a a big old house. It was a reasonably nice house. It was a great school system, which was the whole goal, right? And we cashed out of our other house and cleared up the rest of last of our debt after the bankruptcy, paid off the stinking IRS, right? But to this day, when I mention that street name, my wife's face gets a cloud across it, and all she says is that kitchen, that kitchen, that kitchen, <laughs> that nasty brown linoleum floor, that kitchen, that kitchen. Because, I, I mean, she hated. Hey, but she transferred that, that house. She transferred that husband to that kitchen. So that's actually good for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good he for everybody. We were broke and we were in that kitchen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're right. She, she, she hates she the kitchen instead of Dave. She that's kept good. the, uh, that's good. Kept the uh, ire on the correct item. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's good. But to the, I mean, that's 30 years ago, man. Yeah, it hangs with you. And I've bought a house under pressure, and I still to this day regret that I did that. It's still an ugly house. I put my family through it. And I bought an ugly house. It. it was don't still an it. ugly house when I got ready to sell it. I've done that. I've done it. Don't do it. Just take your time, brother. I know it's hard. Take a cold shower. Take your time. This is The Ramsey Show.
John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Alex is in Cleveland. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm good, guys. Good to talk to you. You too. What's up? So I am 22 years old. I just graduated from Michigan State uh, with a mechanical engineering degree. I uh, am a contract engineer right now, so I, I, I travel a lot. Um, my question for you guys is I, I've got a girlfriend back at home, and she's still in school, but uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to save up for a house for us and a marriage, um, and I'm wondering how to balance my relationship with her while also um, always traveling and always trying to save up for the next goal. And I, I feel like I'm uh, at some points doing one more than I'm, I, I'm uh, focusing on the other one. And so I'm, I guess, how do I put, put my life into balance where uh, I'm enjoying my time with her and seeing her and should I move home? Um, Where's home? And find a closer job. Uh, my home is technically out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And you're in Cleveland, Ohio. And you travel. What kind of range do you travel? Uh, so I, I'm on my way to York. Um, stopped at a service station to talk to you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, I travel to Pennsylvania. I've traveled to Kansas City. Um, so three or four hundred mile I, I radius. All over. Three or four hundred mile radius. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. And you make what? I make $160,000 a year. And how long have you been out of school doing I'm, this? Uh, since January. Okay. Wow. That's not bad. So, man, you're 22 years old. And what I would tell most 22-year-olds who are not married or untethered is to hit the gas on their career. This is a time you can stack yeah. up and do really great. And there's so much technology that you can stay connected to each other right now that even I didn't have when I was young and trying to figure this thing out. The question is whether is this going to be seasonal for you? Is this going to be the rest of your life? And that's the hard question yeah. you have to ask. And then the other question is, it sounds like you took this job and you are making unbelievable money for a 22 year old and you're starting to not like it. Am I, am I hearing that right? Yeah, I, 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 I love the money, um, but I, 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 the some road days sucks. I be, sometimes I want to be close to being on the road I'm sucks. Today. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to use your girlfriend or your relationship to your girlfriend as the reason to, to cash out on this job. If you realize I'm on the road all the time and that's not good for me, it's not good. It's not the life I want to live. Then I want you to own that decision because other, you're going to run into money challenges down the road. You're going to run into relationship issues down the road. And then you're going to start resenting her for something that really isn't her fault. You don't like the job. You don't like the job, right? And it's a million, billion dollars for a 22-year-old. Um, but, yeah, if the road sucks and it's killing you, the road sucks and it's killing you. you got to do something else. Sure, sure. So yeah, how, how, old, I, how, how old is she? What, is she in school? Yeah, she's uh, studying to be an elementary teacher. When graduate when? Yeah, she's got a year left, uh, and then she has to do an unpaid year uh, through uh, internships uh, at, at a job site. Okay, does this job have, you're in, you said it's contract, or does it have an end? You're, you cut yeah, out. You, you out. cut out. Try again. It's contract. Do you have an end on your job? Um. No, they keep extending the contract, which is fine by me. Um, How long does the contract run? Contract usually. About as good as your cell phone service. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So what I what I would say is um, for one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year, if you want to see her, you can buy a lot of airline tickets. Um, and uh, you know. You can fly over there and see her on weekends or whatever, and you can work this out. You're making plenty of money. Spend some money on travel. Spend some money on connectivity. And then just set a date certain because you're not going to do this for 10 years. Right. And set a date certain. Are you going to do this until she graduates and gets through her one year or just until she graduates? When are we getting married? And you start setting it in your mind anyway, and you start going, okay, I'm, I can endure this for two years and pile up a huge pile of cash. 
or I can do, endure this until Christmas, or I can endure this until whatever. I think the uns, I think the idea that it projects indefinitely into the future is part of what's driving you nuts. But um, and the road is hard, right? The road is hard. It is not travel is only glamorous for people that don't do it. <laughs> And it's just not. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just hotels. Oh, God. And, uh, yeah. And if he's flying, it's even worse because you got to deal with the dadgum airport people. So I like the idea of coming up with a dollar amount. Here's what I'd like to have. Yeah, that's not bad. And here, I also like this idea. A date certain or a dollar certain, and then I'm out. And... I'm going to use this as an opportunity to learn from all these different bosses yeah. in all these different cities. Yeah. Use this as graduate school, man. And if you approach it with that heart and spirit, yeah. I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to make this kind of money. And I'm going to learn what, what I like about this guy, what I not like. Then you can set yourself up to what you want to do. But if you just look at it as misery or if you blame her slash no, you can't encourage her, uh, no. then, man, you're just setting I yourself had, up. I for, had to quit this because I balance with my girlfriend. Oh, bull crap. You quit it because you, you hated go. your job. You don't like the job. Okay. Own that, man. That's what he's saying by don't blame your girlfriend. Yeah. So, yeah, I, but I, uh, yeah, I think you've got a, a two year window, something like that. And, um, and I like to, hey, I like to see 22, 23 year olds grinding. I really yeah, do. Yeah, it's awesome. There's nothing, and, and making that kind oh, of bank phew. for a short period of time. Yeah. And again, so spend, get a, get a date or a dollar certain, uh, figure out what you're going to do when you leave this job. And, uh, uh, thirdly, allocate some money for travel for uh, to see her or her to see you and uh, buy some airline tickets or whatever it is. And um, You can land this plane, no pun intended, with $100,000 in cash in a bank or more, $125,000, right when she finishes up her internship, and then y'all can pretty much do what you want to do. Yeah, more because they're probably covering the road costs too. Greg's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, Greg, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how are you, sir? Better than I deserve. How can I help? <laughs> um, I've got a question for you. Uh, my mother is 93 years old. I uh, just had to put her into assisted living a few months ago. She mm. had lupus dementia. Mm. And we tried the home care option, and it got to the point where she was needing 24-hour care. Yeah. Um, she's in a good place. My father was, you know, he's passed, but he was uh, very smart with money. He did the long-term care insurance, and it's helped a lot. Wow. Um my question is, aside from, you know, visiting her and trying to make the best quality of life for her, what to do with her home? Uh, she's bought a paid, she got a paid for home uh, about three miles away from me. It's probably worth around 300. Uh, in a way, I wanted to sit back and just, you know, process this. She's only been assisted living for maybe two months. Uh, on the other hand, I've got people around me saying, if you're going to do it, sell it now. Uh, don't wait. And, uh, I want to do what honors her. And how, she, how, you know, um, how how uh, cognizant is she of this decision? How much is she not, able to process it with you? Not. Um, I would say no. It's not. Okay. It's, so this is just your it's just your decision. Yeah, it's not it gonna is. it's not gonna I'm bother her because she's not gonna understand. No. No. Okay. okay. So Wait. what do you want to do? I don't know. I want to do. I want to honor her, and that's my biggest problem. I don't want to be a landlord. I know that. Okay. I don't. I don't know that keeping the house is a method of honoring her, or selling the house is a method of honoring. Yeah, you've her. backed yourself into a corner that's not real. That's not a real. That's not honor. Has nothing to do with this house, unless you were um, hurting her by selling it, okay, or no, keeping it, no, and no, you're not. No. So, it, not emotionally, not financially, not anything. And so, um, you. I don't want to be a landlord. Um, I think it's just letting go of the past to sell it emotionally, and that's very hard. But I would sell it. I would, too. All right, and now's the time to do that, am I right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Get it dolled up and get a, get a good – go to DaveRamsey.com or RamseySolutions.com and click on ELP for Ram, for endorsed local provider for a real estate agent in the area. They'll help you max it out. This is not a time to play amateur hour. You need a pro in your corner, and they'll help you this from this.
stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Solutions on the debt free stage. Bryce and Lisa are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, Dave. Doing good, Dave. Great. How you doing? Welcome. Where do you guys live? We're from Wichita, Kansas. Ah, welcome to Nashville. And all the way here to do a debt free scream. I love the t shirts. I'm the nerd. I'm the free spirit. So we know who we're addressing here. It's very clear up front. Very cool. How much debt did you guys pay off? 370000 in five years. Whoa! Whoa. And your range of income during that time? We started at 67000 and finished at 167 Wow. What do you all do for a living? I'm a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. And I'm a captain in the Army. Wow. Thank you for your service. Appreciate your support, sir. Thus, wow. Wichita. Okay. So I'm going to guess and say that might have been your house. It was. Ha! Wow. Look at it, weird people! Yeah, we need the subtext on the T-shirt. Weird people, yeah, <laughs> or on the back when you turn around. Yeah, way to go, man! Wow. Paid for. How old are you guys? We're 32. I <laughs> have the paid for house. Yeah. You yes, are sir. truly weird. Yeah. That is awesome, guys. You won. <laughs> Touchdown. Yeah. I love it. What's wow. this house worth? Uh, last time we checked, it was uh, right around 300,000. <laughs> How does that feel at 32 freaking years old? Unreal. A paid for house. It's outstanding, Dave. Feels great. It's amazing. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. It's a whole different place to be. Wow. I got to hear this story. What inspired you to do this five years ago? So, Dave, actually, uh, it started about seven years ago where, where uh, I married my wife. Ah. And I took the responsibility of being a husband to heart. And I wanted to lead my family. And, uh, you know, I ran across you on YouTube. Uh, being a finance major in college, I gravitated towards the money aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Ran across you on YouTube. Uh, you know, I got all inspired. I was working late one evening, and I binge-watched a bunch of your videos, and I came home all excited, and I blew it. <laughs> I told, I, I did everything you say not to do. I told Lisa we were going to get extra jobs, we are going to not spend any money, and uh, we got to be gazelle intense. And she's like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> yep. So <laughs> You need to stay off the caffeine when you're working overnight. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. So, um, you know, so it, it took a couple of years. Your, your name was kind of a cuss word in the, in the Johnson household for a few, uh, few years, but uh, five years ago, the beginning of our story is when we, when Lisa informed me that our daughter Mila was c coming. So ah. all of a sudden her tone changed a little bit. She brought me to the kitchen table and uh, she goes, you know, we should really kind of look at our money situation. And, uh, you know, I think we should take FPU. And I was like, that's a great idea. Wow. That's wonderful. Now that it's your idea, it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. It was a baby step. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And again, my fault. I totally uh, barged into it, but... Learn from my mistake, everybody. There you go. I love it. <laughs> Way to go. So, uh, so yeah. you signed up for Financial Peace University, what, a local church? Or? We, we did in Fargo, North Dakota, originally. That's where okay. we're from originally. And uh, we did went to a local church there with a friend, Paige and Zach, and we took FPU. And from there, we were rowing in the same direction, and our communication improved, and our marriage just went to new levels. Mm. So, Lisa, after you were abused with the Dave Ramsey stuff ahead of time, then baby's on the way, so you go, okay grown-up time i got to get serious and you come into the table and say we're going to do this was that hard to say i want to was put those words out of your mouth let's go to financial peace university <laughs> it was very hard i wasn't ready to be weird yet ah, okay <laughs> so when you went like... to class how long before you started going i think we might really should do all this i mean really i mean you started kind of buying in like first class or eighth class or it was it was the end of the class by the time I was like, all right, I think we can do this. And right after Milo was born, he was actually deployed. Oh, and wow. that's where um, 
I really realized the sacrifice he was making for the family. And I was yeah. like, okay, I better get on board a little bit more with this. Oh, and, wow. And that's where we really hit Gazelle. And Dave, I got to say, too, she was a total trooper while I was deployed. So she, as a nurse with a newborn baby, with me gone, she was working night shifts, weekend shifts. Wow. Uh, she was still, she was all in at that end, totally, or totally bought in at that point. And uh, our grandparents, that her grand, Milo's grandparents, um, helped with taking care of her during overnight shifts. Wow. And things like that. So Lisa just was a total trooper. She jumped right on. Wow. Way to go, you guys. But the net result is no payments in the world. I'm trying. I'm sitting here trying to figure out what was harder, for you to eat a small amount of crow and say, let's take FPU, or for you, the military commander, to be told what to do, and you say, <laughs> yes, ma'am, I'm all in, right? I don't know which one had it harder. A little bit but of both, John. It doesn't matter, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> and, hey, by the way, you, you guys didn't just get out of debt. You guys set out from the beginning, we're going all the way with this thing. All the way, John. We, we, we took baby step seven the same way we did baby step two. We just kept our foot on the gas. Okay. Um, and we said we're not going to, to do our debt-free scream until we were 100% complete. Wow. And what, what kept that motivation going for year three, year four, year five? I think the well, biggest motivation was us dreaming together. Okay. Uh, once she was on board, she all of a sudden at the kitchen, at the dinner table, we were talking about it every night. You know, what, what happens when we pay the car off? Uh, how about when we pay the credit card off? When we get our emergency fund, how good is that going to feel knowing that every speed bump in the road is just a speed bump? It's not an emergency. That, that, was, my, that was my aspect of it, my perspective. <laughs> So you, t- you took data and tied it to emotion and tied that emotion back to data and you just kept working and working and working and working. Just I'm kept dreaming for what was next. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Lisa, uh, uh, not counting each other, who were your all's biggest cheerleaders? Um, we had some friends and family and not a lot of us knew about the journey we were on, but they were supporting us even mm-hmm. though they didn't know it, helping us watch Myla um, just in any way they could so we could to get it done. Yeah. An FPU class had to be going yay raw. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah sure, We actually, yeah. Uh, so five years later, I emailed our FPU coordinator back in Fargo after we moved around the country a few times. And uh, he emailed me right back and said, that was amazing. He gets emails all the time from previous classes on how they succeed and how much they've paid off and everything. So we actually coordinated an FPU class at Reliance Community Church in Wichita, Kansas. Wow, thank you. So, yeah, and it was great. We had some great couples attend that, and uh, we all got to know each other and, and uh, experience a little life together, so. Very nice. So Myla must be five. She's four and a half. Four and a half. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you brought her with you. Yeah. And I love the t-shirt. Check I, this out. Oh, Myla gosh. is the why. I'm the why. <laughs> You're going to get me all teared up on a Monday. <laughs> wow. I'm the nerd. I'm the free spirit. And I'm the why. Yes. <laughs> I'm why my parents did this wow. to change our family tree. That's you right. guys are absolute rock stars. I am so proud of you. That is such a beautiful picture. I don't get to picture. meet hero couples like this every day. This is incredible. I appreciate the uh, encouragement just to me and my family personally. What you all done inside and outside of this adventure is, is extraordinary. Thank Absolutely. you, Absolutely. Very, awesome. very well done. <laughs> so awesome. Well, we've got a copy of the Legacy Journey because you have definitely poured out a new legacy here. And a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away and encourage somebody else with it. So Absolutely. very, very well done, you guys. So beautiful. So beautiful. And she's cute as a button, too. <laughs> very fun. All right, Bryce and Lisa and Myla, Wichita, Kansas, by way of Fargo. $370,000 paid off. That would be the mortgage and everything. We're looking at weird people. They did it in five years, making 67 to 167, including deployment, including lots of nursing OT. Well done, you guys. Very well done. You're free. You'll be able to do anything you want to do. 32 years. It's You won, guys. I can't look at her, man. It's already incredible. won the Super Bowl. I love wow. it. All right. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free. That's how it's done right there. Man, that's inspiring. I don't get to see a lot of smiling families on my show, Dave. This is incredible. <laughs> Just incredible. You get some of the smile after you no, have, uh, told I them know. how to straighten things out. <laughs> Man. Yeah. You cannot be driving in your car right now listening to this and still have an excuse left. You can't. You really can't. I mean, it's ridiculous. You can't. You're either going to be on the sidelines or you're going to be in the game. You're going to decide I'm in or I'm out. Yeah, you got to get in the game. 
you got to do this. I mean, they're 32 years old. And they were deployed and working night shifts and had a newborn and had to talk to parents and had to figure it out and figure it out and figure it out. And they looked up and five years later, they don't owe anybody. Any. No excuses. None. No whining. Solve it. Get her done. Wow. I love it, man. What a love crew. It. This is the Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Jacob is in Knoxville. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Doing well. How are you, Dave? <laughs> Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, so I am on baby step four and have 25000 in my emergency fund. Um, 29, I make 130000 a year. And I have a side hustle that I'm going to talk about here in a second. But um, I currently have 54000 in my 401k. And I put in 12%. Um, my company matches 4% and also puts in an additional 4 whether I contribute anything or not. Great. Uh, and so the 401k has, like, has awesome mutual funds. I'm very happy with them. Um, and so, so the situation is, in my, to get to my question, uh, I started doing a Dave Ramsey-ish last summer. <laughs> I thought I could – I'm in sales, so I always thought I could kind of out – out earn my dumb decisions. Uh, so I never got too, super intense until recently. Um, but what I did do then it back then when I started, uh, listening was start a side hustle. So since last July, my side hustle has earned me $156,000. Wow. Um, not bad. And per, yeah, uh, and it should well outperform that. Um, next year I got, uh, product I created, um, into like 400 some stores. So, um, it's doing really well. And so my request, my question, uh, is around retirement funds. So, um, I know you always say that, uh, do 401k first, uh, then raw and then traditional to get to the 15%. And, um, but I cannot contribute to a Roth making over 139,000. I know you can do a backdoor Roth, mm -hmm. uh, but since I like the way my 401k is invested, mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if it's better just to stick with the 401k instead of worrying about doing a backdoor Roth or if it still makes sense to. Well, if you to can get to 15%, you putting in 15% of your household income, are you married? Uh, I have a fiance. <laughs> okay. You're not married. So not yet. Okay. So no. you make what at your day job? Uh, 130. Okay. Oh, you told me that six times. I'm sorry. And then you made 156 <laughs> on a side gig. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that puts us at $280,000 that you need to save 15% of. Okay. You can't do that in but, just a 401k. You can't get there because you're maxed out at, uh, yeah, you're maxed out at 19 and some change. And so you're going to max out your 401k. You're going to max out your Roth IRA and you're still not going to be there. And so you, what you're going to do is you're going to sit down with a smart investor pro in your area, and um, and they're going to talk to you on their side gig. Do you have any employees? I do not. So Good. you can all, do a SEP. Oh, you can do a SEP over there, and that'll get us up. And you can do all of these in Roths. Okay, so you're going to okay. do a backdoor. You're going to do a SEP, and you're going to do a 401k all in Roth. And you're going to take your match over at your company. All they'll give you, and whether uh, you know all the match they'll give you over there. You're going to max out every bit of this in order to get to 15% of your household income going into retirement. Now, if your side hustle ever goes away, obviously you're going to reduce what you're putting in because each year you're going to put in 15% 
of your household income. But the SEP, the SEP Roth is the way to go over on your side hustle. It's a very easy way to do it with no employees. Now, if you've got employees, it starts to get really complicated and a pain in the butt. But um, so go to uh, RamseySolutions.com and click on the Smart Vester Pro. Click on the Smart Vester and get a Smart Vester Pro in your area to sit down with and let them walk you through doing the backdoor Roth. And you'll do your own max out on your, on your 401k, and then they can also walk you through setting up a SEP, so a simplified it? employee pension plan. Okay, I was going to say, what's what's a SEP? And it's uh, you can do up to 13.2%, uh, uh, I think, so the formula actually ends up working out, but a large percentage of your net profit on your business. So you basically create a pension plan for yourself. Exactly. It's another, it's a little, it's a 401k for a single operator. Okay. All right. Is where it amounts to. If you have employees that have been with you more than two of the last five years, mm-hmm. uh, you have to put the same percentage of their income in. So oh, it's not okay. very good for a small business that has employees. Okay. But for a solopreneur like this, it's very good. Excellent. It's excellent for doing that. And okay. I actually did one with this business when I started. It was just me. Wow. Okay. And then the, uh, you know, once I had been open uh, five years, mm-hmm. then I had employees that had been with me more than two of the last five. I truncated that puppy and okay. went to a different direction on retirement savings, but uh, that's the way it went. Dave is in Virginia Beach. Hi, Dave. Dave. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I am a 50, uh, 51 year old, single, no kids. I'm feeling stuck in a rut and wondering how to get better traction. Uh, the job looks stable for, I'd say, the next three years. Looks real solid with the contract. Income is about $69,000. we got about 12000 in checking. A rut on what? What, are you, what kind of rut? Yeah, what are you rutting? A career rut, a psychological rut, it's, a relationship well, it's, rut? It's pretty much a financial rut. Oh, okay. And let's see, 401K, I've only got about 62000 Mm-hmm. I owe ten thousand five hundred on a car mm-hmm. and forty five thousand dollars on the house. Where do you want to be? No Where do you want to be with your money? Uh, I just really, I'm almost ha- having anxiety about getting out of debt. Yeah. Why? As quickly as possible. You, you mean you're having anxiety that's telling you to get out of debt or to not to, to get out to of get debt? out of debt? Oh, yep, good. To get out of debt. Okay, so the debt and is the bothering car. you. That's good anxiety. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it is a good It's thing. an alarm telling you your house is on fire, and it is. Right? Yeah, you're right. So you have a $10,000 car debt. What other debt? House 45, what else? Um, house, uh, that's it. But I do have some upcoming uh, remodeling expenses, like a new roof and a few other things. I'm thinking that's going to be about 16000 What do you make? off on it till. Uh, sixty nine thousand without overtime. I, I make more when there's overtime available. What do you do? I uh, do design work, computer aided design. Okay, cool, good for you. So you got side hustle available to you if you wanted to as well. All right, and so let, let me get this straight: fifty five thousand plus sixteen for the rehab uh, w- would be like seventy five thousand dollars. We'll call it. All right. Mm-hmm changes your whole life it yeah. lets you breathe and it lets you sleep right yeah, your house right. is paid off your car is paid off and your house is rehabbed you don't have a payment in the stinking world and you make 70 grand a year it changes your life doesn't it yeah so yeah, we need seventy five thousand dollars you're a single guy mm-hmm. making 51 or it's 51 that's making 70 if i need 75 yeah. I, that's 35 a year for two years hmm that's overtime on top of overtime, hitting the gas, having some fun. Not much. <laughs> having Just some working. Fun knowing I'm working towards a goal. Oh, yeah. To- yeah, that's the end goal is yeah. fun. But right now, for two years, you don't have a life. You do beans and rice, rice and beans, and all you do is work, and you become completely debt-free with your house rehabbed, and you're 53. I'm already feeling better. And that contract you're worried about going away in four years? That that contract you're worried about going away in four three, four years, it doesn't mm-hmm. you're debt free, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. And if you don't have any payments in the world, could you actually start doing some investing and become wealthy? Answer is yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that. And yeah. when you're when you're not so anxious and knotted up and tied up, could you go hang out with some other people, get connected to a community, have some fun? Yes. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Mm-hmm. Not probably, hundred percent. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep, you're right, and I need to do that. But That's why we call it financial yeah. peace. Two words that don't go together, like Fauci math. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So 35000 a year for two years. Yeah. Hmm. You can do it, and I'll help you. I'm going to send you a copy of the book, The Total Money Makeover. It's going to show you exactly how to do this step by step, okay? Oh, awesome, Dave. I appreciate that big time. You hang on. Kelly will pick up, and we'll get you going. Call us back when you're debt-free and tell us about your journey. I want to hear your success story. You can do this, man. Yes. I think you just need a little bit of a clear path, and uh, you're the man. You're going to get her done, baby. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Good, good hour, John. Thank you, Dr. John Deloney. James Childs is our producer. Kelly Daniel is our associate producer and phone screener. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, and we'll be back. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts. in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solution, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today. On his show, he talks about anxiety, uh, mental health issues of all kinds, boundaries, relationship questions. So we certainly will weave those in between the retirement questions today, like they fit or something, but we will anyway. And open phones at 888 Hey, I'm pretty anxious about retirement, five, Dave. Two, so. two, five. Yeah, we'll find out what anxiety is when it comes to retirement or something like that. But hey, if you want to talk to John, this is your day to do it. Or, so, or you can call his show at 844-693-3291 and have a chance to have your question featured on the show. Or you can email in at askjohn at ramseysolutions.com. To start off this hour, Lisa is with us. Lisa is in Saginaw, Michigan. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi. Hi. How can we help? Um, my mom passed away a little less than a month ago. Oh, my. I'm sorry. And, thank you. I have um, five siblings. One is diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic. And then I have two that are pushing to sell my mom's house right away. And two that want to hold on to it for a few months to let it sink in and they don't want to rush at getting rid of stuff and and they're both sides are putting me in the middle. And I don't know what the right thing to do is. Mm. Is there a will? Yeah, but her will just states that when she passes that you know, the house will be sold and it goes um it's split between us. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't say, you know, who, like who how is the, long. Who is the executor of the will? My my sister that wants to hold on to it till for, you know, a couple months at least. Or, mm-hmm. And then my brother that lives out of town wants to hold on to it for a couple months because he wants to come back in the summer. Mm-hmm. My one sister, she's saying she wants to sell it while it's hot mm-hmm. market. Mm-hmm. And my other brother wants to... I have a think about selling it to his stepdaughter, which no. I already know that answer is right off the bat. No way. Right. I'm so sorry. I mean, his wife couldn't even come to the funeral, so I'm not planning to go to her family. Yeah, I'm sorry. How, how old are you guys? What's the range on your siblings? Youngest, and I'm 51. And the oldest is... 
Uh, we're losing Lisa. You. Lisa, are you there? Yeah. Okay. You you cut That's out the the oldest the oldest, the oldest is what? Oldest is what? Sixty four. Okay. Sixty four. Right. I'm going to give and you. I'm going to give you the down. answer, and then John can fill in the cracks uh, from the emotional standpoint as well. The okay. answer is it's not up to you. You don't have any okay. say in this, and neither do your other brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. The will is very explicit and very clear. The executor of the will, they are called executors because the word means execute. They are to ex- execute the will, what the person's will was, what the person desired that passed away. Your mom's will gave, named an executor and told them to sell the house. That is what will occur. And it's not up to you. Mm-hmm. And it's not up to your other brothers and sisters. They don't get a vote. This is not a democracy. They don't get a say. And so the executor is being mm-hmm. wise and saying, we're going to wait a couple months and let this kind of calm down, let folks have time to come in and pick up an item out of the home for uh, nostalgia purposes, let people have a little bit of room to execute. The market's not going to cool off in two months. It's okay. That's kind of what my first impression yeah, it's was. Okay. And then but it's not up to you. The other one started pushing and pushing. The other, and pushing. One, the other one's pushing because they're broke and they want the money. Yeah. That's the only reason they're pushing. But they don't have a vote. So okay. I think your job is to encourage your sibling, who is the executor, to do what the will says and do it with wisdom and grace and kindness. And that's all their you job know. is. Nobody gets to decide anything except the executor. By the way, the executor doesn't even get to decide anything. Their job is not to decide. Their job is to do what it says to do. It's to carry out. To execute. Yeah. To carry out. Does that make sense? Yes. And that takes a Thank lot you. of pressure and a lot of emotion off of everybody once all of you understand you don't have a vote. That's right. And this, okay. there's a, a unique role somebody can step up and play. Dave's right. The will says, here's what's going to happen to that house. And here's who's going to make that decision. So that's that's written. Somebody can step up, and that might be you, and say – this has been determined and the person who will make this final decision is the executor. All we can do is choose to support her or to tear this family apart. And I, for one, refuse to tear this family apart over a couple of months, over some nonsense. And everybody grieves differently. I grieve by trying to go solve everything. Other people I care about grieve by just wanting to sit and absorb. Everybody does that differently. Dave's right. One of them's going to be one of your brother's sisters is going to be broke and need the money. The other one wants it for their family. Everyone's got these ulterior motives, but at the end of the day, they're all grieving. And so if somebody right. steps up and says, "Enough. I've heard everybody's opinion." I'm done listening to you talk bad about my older sister. I'm done listening to you talk about why your stepdaughter needs it. Done. I refuse to engage in this conversation. When she's ready to sell this house, we'll engage in that conversation. And then you can call her and say, I've you've got your full support. I, I, I'm fully supportive of how you want to do this. And um, You want to put the house I, on I'm the out. market in two months? I'm in full support of that. That's right. And I'm, I'm done with the conversation, period. And you can send a strong message through your brothers and sisters that this type of backbiting and um, hurting each other, cutting each other, we're done. It's over. Y'all can do it amongst yourselves, but you're not going to include me. And I will not hear it with my older sister. It's the, the, the difference in you getting the money now or you getting the money in two months is not worth destroying relationship with everybody in the place. That's right. And that's the message for the sister that's or the sibling that's broke and wants their money. And if the stepdaughter wants to buy it and pay full market value and go get their own mortgage and not ha- and just be a normal buyer, they're more than welcome. But to the extent that they get a special deal, the answer is no. Right. Yeah. I think he wants to give her uh, a discount. Yeah, I'm sure. And that would be the paranoid schizophrenic's daughter, right? No. It's no, it's another one. Okay. Daughter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was just guessing. Okay, <laughs> missed. All right, but uh, yeah, that's you know, this that, this is the stuff that how fa- this is how families play together. But John's exactly right. Just uh, 
just throw your, throw your hat in the ring and support and just call everybody to unity and love. This is what mom would want. Mom would not want y'all all fighting over two months. We hear you want to sell it now. We're not gonna, so stop. Yeah. decision with zeros on the end because you didn't have the research done well that would make you like most of us me too most people make choices based on feelings or opinions especially when buying a house but when it comes to this real estate market this is uh it's not an amateur hour feelings are uh, not your friends. Facts are your friends. Dr. John Deloney says that all the time. So find out what you can actually afford not what you like research what's trending on home prices talk to a real high octane real estate agent in your area to get the facts get with one of our elps go to ramseysolutions.com slash agent get an agent who will help you make smart decisions because they have a proven track record of dealing with this market ramseysolutions.com slash agent our question today comes from blinds.com they have a 100 percent satisfaction guarantee that means even if you mismeasure you miss you pick the wrong color you mess up they'll make your window blinds over for free you get free samples free shipping with the new promos they run all the time you save even more the promo code is ramsey all right today's question comes from cassie in wisconsin my husband and i recently decided to move closer to family but since making that decision, my sense of security is crumbling. We lost two businesses when the pandemic started. We sold our house for a good price. However, the area we are moving to is more expensive. We are completely debt free, but with the current economic landscape, I'm freaking out that we're putting ourselves in a shaky position. How do we know that we haven't made a huge mistake? Hmm. Dave, how do you tell somebody to know if they haven't made a huge mistake. I kind of have a default answer to that, but before I just throw it out there. I, um, you know, I, it's not permanent. You can undo anything you're doing. Like if you go there and it doesn't work out, you can leave. That's, how do you know you haven't made a huge so mistake? So it's not a you huge don't. mistake. You might have made a mistake. Yeah, you might have screwed up. You don't but know. I, but is, is it life-threatening? No. No. Is it going to ruin the rest of your life financially? No. Not unless you stay there in the middle of the huge mistake. Mm -hmm. But if, it, if you get over there and it's a mistake, then you leave. Yeah. Um, but um, I can't tell what all's going on here. Uh, if you sold everything and you lost your business and you don't have any incomes and you're moving to an expensive area, that would be like a good thing for you to be freaking out because you don't have any income. Right. You should be freaking out. Uh, but that, that's going to happen if you stay where you are, right. you don't have any income. So the lack of income that I think I'm reading here is, um, you know, you're debt free, but you don't have income, right? You still have to make money even when you're debt free. And I read this more, I'm, I'm assuming that they've got, they figured out they got to get jobs. I read this more as something that's happened to me several times, which is, I know what the right decision to make is, and I make that decision, and I still wake up in six months, and you get that, that it, do we do the right thing? And you just feel like you're on unstable ground, mm -hmm. and so you got to circle back to, again, those, the data, right, mm -hmm. the facts. Mm -hmm. Why'd you do this in the first place? Is it mm -hmm. the right move? Yes, it is. You probably woke up, and you don't have any community anymore, and you got to go make friends again, and you got to go figure out all those things that are not fun to do, but that slowly help your feet settle into the to the sidewalk, right? Well, and you decide to move closer to family, and the great news is you're closer to family. The bad news is you're, you're closer, closer to, to fam family. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but that I've, might be sinking in, too. I've left. The fairyland view of being near mom might not 
be quite. Now, mom's nearer to you. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my god! But I've left his jobs, went somewhere new. I knew all the reasons why I left that job, and then Dave, whenever they finally replace me at that old position, I think, ooh, for I don't know why, it just kind of gets me a little bit. And ah, uh, the the world keeps turning without me there. Yeah, you realize, right? you realize you're it's not. Yeah, we can exist without. Or you. old employees call and say, hey, they that cool thing idea you had, they just changed it. Now they're doing something else. It's three, four years ago. I still think, oh man, but that was a good. Idea. I suddenly realized I had a little bit of my identity still attached back there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be human nature. That's though. right. And so I got to acknowledge it, and then I got to realize, well, I live here now. And as you pointed out, how do you know it's not a mistake? You don't. So live into it, and make the best of it. It's and an if you, adventure, if baby. If you realize it's not great, move. It's an adventure, baby. This is how it works. Yeah, and, I, I think that's true. And you're but, debt free. You set yourself up for this kind of move, right? Yeah. There's a. Uh, an old movie. I think it was called Parenthood with Steve Martin in it. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of one-liners yeah, in that thing yeah. that are fabulous. Uh, but at the end of the... I mean, he goes through all this turmoil with family stuff, and it's just driving him crazy. All this anxiety, all this angst and jobs and loss and all this. I, I mean, I don't even remember what all it is, but it's like a constant... The whole movie is a constant state of crap. <laughs> and at the end of it, he's getting on a roller coaster, and he's, he's riding the roller coaster of life. Yep is the metaphor and he's enjoying the ride that's right with the ups and the downs and it's a beautiful scene at the end the beautiful metaphor for the whole thing because that is parenthood yeah yeah you, it, it's going to be you know that is moving close to family that is changing cities it's an adventure so uh it's still let's say let's say you move um from uh what the city you're in and you move to the more expensive place and two years from now you're miserable mm -hmm. Uh, economically, it's not working out. Relationally, it's not working out. And it, we would, if you want to call it a huge mistake, you can call it a huge mistake. If you just want to call it a mistake, we can call it a mistake. So two years from now, what would you do? What could you do? Uh, load up the truck and move back. Right. Or go somewhere else. Or right. start a third possible city. Right. That's the beauty of America. It is still, as many, many people don't agree with this, but it is still free. Yeah. And you can just decide, I don't want to live in California anymore. Right. And a whole bunch of people did, and they left. <laughs> oh, man, they did. Yep. And I don't want to live in New York anymore. And a whole bunch of people did, and they left. Right. And, uh, you know, and I don't want to live near my mother. And you leave. Right. And I do want to live near my mother. So you go. Right. And, you, you know, these are options. You can just decide. And the, so the cool thing about a decision is if it's the wrong one, make another one. Yeah. And just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean you made the wrong decision. Right? And we see that with breakups. 100% of change is going to be uncomfortable. There you go. We see that with breakups, with moves, with new jobs. They're always uncomfortable. Right? Yeah. And we, we often, we're so obsessed with our feelings that we feel less than what we imagine perfect is going to be. And we think, well, we screwed that up. No, you didn't. He didn't. Right. It's going to be uncomfortable for a season until you get friends, to get a community, to get a church, to y'all find your date spot, to you find the place where everybody knows your name, whatever those are. And, or two years you wake up and realize this isn't the right move for us. Yeah. Let's get out of here. One of our operating board members wrote the, wrote our Ramsey newsletter last week. And the whole opening thing was, I hope this week has been uncomfortable for you. Yeah. I hope this week you've had conflict that was healthy. Yeah. I hope this week that you've been pushed to be better. I hope this week you've been had the uncomfortable conversation pushing someone else to be better. I hope this week that you've gone outside your comfort zone and it scared the crap out of you. Yeah. I hope this week, because otherwise you're not living. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's yeah, good. We are addicted to comfort in our society. Yeah. Addicted. That's very, very good stuff. Very good stuff. So hang in there, Cassie. Hang in there. Yeah. Make the move. It's an adventure. Ride the roller yeah. coaster. Do it. Have at it. And if it's bad, just undo it. Yeah. Just go back. You're debt free like, for a reason. I don't know if I should pay off my house. I don't know. I've got the money in my checking account. I don't know if I should pay off my house. Pay it off. Pay it off. <laughs> if you hate being debt free, you can go get a mortgage. <laughs> People, people don't do it, but if you get in there and you go, you know, this is the dumbest thing I ever did. I hate being debt-free. I can't stand it. I really enjoyed having that mortgage payment. I want another one. The mortgage company will sign your butt right up. That's the beauty of America. <laughs> You'll be right back in there in no time. If you pay off all your credit cards and cut them all up, 
and you don't you don't uh, like it, they will give you another one. Th- there'll be one in your mailbox Tuesday. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll have another shot. Oh my gosh! They'll give a dead person and a dog a credit card, so they'll definitely give you one. Oh Lord! This is the Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage, Caleb and Danielle are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey Dave. We're doing good. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Indiana. Princeton, Indiana. Princeton, near Evansville? Evansville. Yes. All right, cool. Well, good to have you guys. Thank you. And all the way to Nashville to do a debt free scream. Yep. That's right. And how much did you pay off? 46,500. 857. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> all right. Very good. And how long did this take? Uh, 28 months. 28 months. And your range of income during that time? Sixty to $80,000. Cool. Good for you guys. What kind of debt was the forty-seven? It was more, more like uh, normal stuff like credit cards, medical bills, car loans, student loans. Student loans being the biggest chunk. So you were just normal? Yeah. A little Pretty bit much. of everything. Just bopping along. How long have y'all been married? Uh, since 2016. Okay. So five years? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. And... Of that five years, two and a half of it almost mm-hmm. was spent getting out of debt. So you were married a little while, and you look up and go, this is no fun. No. So tell me the story. How did you get connected to us? What was your inspiration on this? Um, well, a little backstory. We're, we're coming from different families of how we manage money. Some of them just don't know how to do it right. Some of them are just organized, and we just came together as like a clump. When we got married, we were like, we don't <laughs> want to live in debt. I love a it. Clump. <laughs> That's what most people do, yeah. We don't want to live in, in debt. So we were like, okay, what can we do? So we struggled along when we first got married. We're like, we're going to try and figure out how to pay it off. We just got a credit card, started using that for a little bit. Um, come in 2018, we go to church, and our church was holding the Financial Peace um, oh, University. Oh, there it is. So we're like, hey, let's just do this. We'll try it. And I'm being the free spirit. I'm like, I don't really want to be told where my money goes. And he's like, I got this. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we'll just go through the class. We did it. A um, little bit, probably it was in November of 2018. In December of 2018, that's when we first started, like, let's hit it hard. We're going to start with his student loans, pay this car off. Um, we cash flowed three cars during that time. We had a baby during that time. Wow. So it was just like, let's get it done. Um, COVID happened, so that kind of put a pause on it. Yeah. But we were... While everyone was spending it buying TVs and everything, we put it in what we call our own emergency fund and called it the COVID fund so I wouldn't touch it Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to spend it on TVs or a new car or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's what we used as my student loans. So you've had a problem with TVs in the past? TVs, radios, (laughs) anything, phones. Him just nodding his head. Yep. (laughs) Always trying to get that bigger size TV now and then. Always wanted something "Eh." bigger. Yeah. That's awesome. So we just finally just got to the point where, like, let's just get it done. I'm tired of being in debt, and I want to change my family tree. Way to go. So So the class gave you the framework. Yeah. And then you go through the struggles of the ups and downs and the COVIDs, and you push on through and knock it out. Yeah. How's it feel now that you did it? Different. (laughs) Feels like a weight's been lifted off. That's for sure. Yeah. It's nice not having student loan companies just hounding you for uh, 
monthly payments each time mm-hmm. and realizing being on the monthly minimum payments that you're hardly getting anywhere because the interest is already catching up almost to the exact amount. We have extra money. We're like, what do we do with it now? Yeah. You feel like you got a raise. Yeah. Yeah. You got control of your most powerful wealth building tool now, your income. You guys are amazing. Way to go, rock stars. Thank you. Thank you. How is your marriage different? We or, It worked on a lot of the communication part of it. It was more mm-hmm. like I'd sit there and try to hide money from him when we first got married and be like, oh, I bought this and it's brand new. And he'd where'd be this like, come where'd from? this come from? <laughs> And I was like, okay, so we just sat down with like, let's budget together, let's talk together, and we started talking more, and communication more, and we we're able to talk a lot better, and we don't have the fear of, oh no, what did I buy, and what is he going to get mad at, mm. kind of thing. We're able to be like, okay, I can buy this. Okay, the I can buy Target bags this. under the bed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. In yeah. the closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hide in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. Full disclosure: there's a cleanliness to that. Yeah. There really is. There's a, a simplicity to uh, ha- having it all right there. Yeah. And you don't have any, any side deals going, anything else. It's it's really, really clean. Good for you guys. Yeah. Very good. So your Financial Peace University class cheer you on? Were they cheerleaders for you? They were. They were a big uh, part of it. We um, went through it again just this le- like during COVID just to try and get a refresher and be like, okay, let's keep going. Good. And mm-hmm. uh, the te- the coordinator for it was really proud of us when we came up to church and was like hey guess what we paid it all off yeah that's awesome so yeah very good you guys very good so what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is now that you've done it i would have to say that sitting down together and actually discussing everything in regards to where the money needs to go actually writing it out and following it you know basically making your own roadmap and working together to figure out where the road bumps are that you got to start planning for on the side as well as keeping up with your regular uh, utilities and mortgage and everything else. And keep it visual so you can see where your goals are going, so you can see what you're going to do. So when you start paying off your debt, you can have like a pie chart in a way and color that off. Okay, we got there. Okay, we got this. And then just keep going. Mm, that's good. So. Like that. How do you encourage um, families with young kids when they're in the middle of this and a pandemic and homeschooling? and what, It's what crazy, else? but just start it and once you start going you'll you'll get to the momentum where you like you see a change you see it and you just keep going i've heard a rumor that if you don't buy your kids everything they want they still manage to survive is that true <laughs> they're still I standing mean, right here outside us so my, my, i get told i hate I, I get hated a lot every single day but i'm like it's not in the budget <laughs> our four-year-old now she used to sit there i used to say well it's dave ramsey's fault it's not the budget <laughs> so she started saying it's not in the budget it's not the yeah. budget anytime we talk so about this going is why this next generation doesn't like me no, right. I'm not <laughs> yeah. uh, but i can't wait till she starts dating someday and looks at somebody and says that's not in the budget exactly Fantastic. see yeah. <laughs> you've wired it in at a young age Good i love you. it yeah where'd you get that money <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so perfect well well done you guys we're very proud of you excellent excellent job heroes Man, you took control of your life. You're debt-free, 28 long months, and you brought the three kiddos with you. What are their names and ages? Aiden is 10, uh, Presley is 4, and Ryman is going to be one, gonna be in one at the end weeks. of the month. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So. Well, we've got a copy of uh, The Legacy Journey for you. That's the next chapter in your story to go complete the uh, changing of your family tree. And, of course, the uh, – <laughs> he's pulling mom's hair. That's great. And, uh, of course, the total money makeover for you to give away as well. So Caleb and Danielle, Aiden, Presley, and Ryman, they got their hands full. Evansville. Indiana, 47000 paid off in 28 months, making 60 to 80. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're debt-free! <laughs> yeah! That's how it happens right there. Oh, that's seriously fun. Man, that's amazing. <laughs> so Very great. well done, you guys. Very well done. I mean, you got three littles that size. It's chaos. It is. You don't know what day and what month, what year it is. And you're trying to homeschool everybody and still keeping that, that goal in mind and keeping enough, like that last shred of sanity to say, nope, not in the budget. We got to keep doing it. We got to keep going. We got a bigger goal in sanity. mind. It's the last boundary we cannot cross. It's not in the budget. Wow. Yeah. So you remember uh, a thousand years ago before... There was much Facebook. There was a thing called MySpace. Yes. So 
the Dave Hater Club goes all the way back to MySpace. <laughs> there was a teenager group on MySpace titled "I Hate Dave Ramsey," <laughs> and it was all the teenagers whose parents were doing our stuff, and they t- were told no. Oh, that's it fantastic. goes all the way back. Those people are now thirty-five years old. <laughs> I, hey, if you were a part of the "I Hate Dave Ramsey" MySpace group, yeah, and we- you're in your thirties, please. Right in, Kelly. Let what her know. What happened? Let Kelly know. Yeah, we'll, we'll put you on. We'll do like a whole, I hate it. I used to hate I Dave Ramsey. Well, maybe, maybe you still do. And now I'm debt free. Maybe be you fantastic. were trained at an early age to hate Dave Ramsey, <laughs> and it's stuck with you. Yeah. We, maybe your parents used me like she did as an abusive tool. That's right. As a weapon. Dave Ramsey said it's not in the budget. It's Dave Ramsey's fault. That's what she said. It's Dave Ramsey's fault. That's right. Now, I'm going to go out there, and those kids are going to hit me they are gonna, at the break. <laughs> yes. That's that, what's going to happen. Her son is eyeballing you right now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> oh, that's fun. Well, there's a lot of things I get blamed for that I didn't do, but I did do that. You did do that. <laughs> and one day... When she recognizes what a changed family tree looks like and just how different her childhood was than her her friends in school, she'll say, ah, that day wasn't so bad after all. Yeah, my mother. My mother, she says, not in the budget. I remember my mother. Her mother's the hero. Yes, that's right. She said her dad's the hero. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Margaret Thatcher said, No one would remember the Good Samaritan if he'd only had good intentions. He had money as well. Yeah, poor people are generally not fed by poor people. Hmm. Starving children are not fed by poor people, generally speaking. That's how that works. So the ability to live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else is the highest calling of money. It's the highest calling of this subject matter we deal with around here. If you're a business owner or leader, listen up. Financial wellness benefits are the thing now in the wellness space. They're no longer really optional. The team here at Ramsey Solutions, we just did a survey, a piece of research, and found that half of all employers say their employees are stressed about money. But only 18% feel responsible for their employees' financial well-being. Well, no one's responsible for someone else's well-being that's an adult. But you are responsible as an adult, as a business leader, to pour into your team. Money, stress, If it's following your employees to work every day, it's killing your bottom line. And it creates turnover, missed work, lost productivity, even possibly dangerous situations because someone's not concentrating in a manufacturing setting. Mm -hmm. you got to fix this if you're leading out there. Get our team's report for free and learn how to make it right. Text WELLNESS to 33789. That's WELLNESS to 33789. Nine, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Uh, Huda is with us in Winchester, Virginia. Hi, Huda. How are you? Hi. Uh, good evening. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, I'm going to start a new job uh, in August, and they are offering me uh, a retirement uh, retirement uh, plan. It's um, the uh, hybrid uh, retir- uh, retirement plan. Uh, um, uh, this plan has two parts. The first part is the defined benefit plan, and the the, uh, the other one is the defined contribution plan. I really don't understand how they work. It's my first time um, um, uh, having uh, a retirement plan. I'm going to work in the local school system. Okay. All right. Well, the defined mm-hmm. benefit plan, uh, you don't have any choices in. They're just going to do it. Uh, yeah. The mm-hmm. other is optional, and I would not do it. I would do Roth IRAs and good mutual funds before you invest in their retirement plan. 
And if I decided to choose there, what is the difference between the um, uh, between the Roth IRR, uh, our, um, the Roth and the other one? You have control of what it is invested in, and it grows completely tax-free when you put it into a Roth IRA. You don't have any control in a defined benefit plan of any kind. Uh, it is defined by someone else, not you. Thus the phrase, defined benefit plan. Uh, it is a on the benefit side. It is a benefit, meaning they're giving it to you. So obviously, we take money that's free, regardless of if it's poorly invested or not. Uh, but not free money, money that you have to put in a defined contribution. That means you contribute. No, thank you. I'm not going to put money in something I don't have any control over and is stuck there when I leave. Uh, so not really a good plan. Uh, I avoid those. Uh, they're not the end of the world. But I, it's not where I would put my money if I woke up in your shoes. Pretty simple. Megan is in San Antonio. Hi, Megan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> um, so I, I'm 44 years old, and I've um, already saved a pretty good nest egg. I had a, a goal of saving a million dollars in my retirement by the time of 40, and I finally hit that at 44. Way to go! Um, <laughs> a 44 um, mil, a 44 year old millionaireess. Yeah, <laughs> very, very nice. Um, so my question is, um, I do still have a car loan and a home mortgage, um, and I'm starting to think about um, potentially investing in, like, rental property. And I'm wondering, do I need to, you know, pay off my car and my house yes. before I start saving? Yes, okay. And then after that, save um, to purchase a r- rental property, property with cash. Exactly. Right? That's what I did. Okay. Several hundred okay. million dollars ago. <laughs> That's what I did. Very nice. I got out okay. of debt after I went bankrupt, started over, never borrowed again, got our house paid off, used all of my income to pile up and buy a rental property, then pile up and buy another rental property, then pile up and buy another rental property. And every time you have a paid for rental property, you know what they make next year? A lot of money because there's no yeah. payments on them. And every time you have another one, you can buy another one even faster. It snowballs in your okay. favor this time. So you are apparently making bank. What do you make? Uh, well, I make one thirty, but I I am one of those people that have I feel satisfaction from seeing money in the bank. So I started saving early on, um, and I'm still putting about twenty percent of my pay into my retirement. And mm-hmm. I guess that was my next question. I would Is temporarily okay? stop that now that you're a millionaire. Uh, you can't really okay. use that money at your age. I'd temporarily stop that and clean this car and this house up. Uh, do you have any? Okay. Uh, you have any emergency money at set aside at all? Um, I've got like, my savings of around four grand. Four thousand so dollars is your entire is your entire non retirement savings. <laughs> yeah, I, you I had a singular focus, focus, girlfriend. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow! You had a goal, and I, uh, you were pedal to the metal on that goal. I'm so proud of you, though. Yeah, it won't take no, long to you. clean up the other. You got a hundred thirty thousand dollar income. I would temporarily <laughs> stop because can you sense for just a second if I just speak it? It hasn't happened yet, but can you kind of breathe in? What it's going to feel like to have no car payment, and then take another breath. What it feel like to have no house payment. To go with yeah, your million dollars. Yeah. Right. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Because it sets you up then okay. to go go to the next level on the wealth building. Because here's the thing. Oh, man. The numbers are astronomical. Yeah. Here, here's the deal. Your, your retirement, I assume, is invested in good mutual funds. Yes. Okay. If you don't add to it at all, it will double roughly every seven years. Okay, really? so you're 44. <laughs> Did you hear that voice? Yeah. Really? So at, you're 44. <laughs> at 51, it's 2. At 58, it's 4. At 65, it's 8. If you add nothing mm, okay. to it. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's why I'm okay with you temporarily stopping for a moment here and knocking the house out. Okay, so okay. we know that that's going to happen. In addition to that, we also know you're going to do some additional savings because we can't stop you from doing it. It's how you're wired. That's a wonderful thing, mm-hmm. by the way. So if you do additional saving and investing, including buying rental properties with cash and so on, I would project that fairly conservatively, if my $8 million was accurate on just the doubling, right? Is it fairly mm-hmm. conservatively, you're going to have $20 million when you get to 65. Oh, 
See, this is I, what happens I, when you hit this, this stage. But now one component of that is you can invest even more. You know, I throw money, like when my house is paid off, I throw money in an index fund just to pile it up to pay mm-hmm. cash for a rental property, okay? Oh, okay. So you put it, you save it in, in an index. Yeah, fund. I just throw it into a mutual fund until I have enough to buy a house or buy a property that creates income. Okay. Okay. And then you go buy another okay. one, then you go buy another one, then you go buy another one. And of course, every time, as I said, every time you do that, you've got that money freed up. So you could sit there and put 20% into retirement and, and put your house payment plus $2,000 a month extra into this index fund to buy rental property with pretty quick. And see, now we've added a whole other dimension to the $8 because we're back to saving 20%. And that's, how got you, that's what got you to a million to start with. So you've done, you've set yourself up if you play this through to go to the next level. The first level of wealth is $1 to $5 million net worth. You've blown that out of the water because of your age. You're, you're going to, I mean, you, okay. you really screw this up. You're going to beat that up. Okay. But <laughs> if you don't screw it up, you're going to go that next level, which is DECA millionaire, 10 million or more. Holy and God. you really, if you'll focus just a little bit, you're going to be at 20 million. And Megan, will you do me a favor? Mm-hmm. Will you have some fun? <laughs> Yeah, I well, it's it's hard. Like I have been trying to travel more. And, good, uh, good. Do, yeah, now, money I, is for generosity. Enjoy your life for fun, and for investing so that you can do more generosity and more fun. Yes, enjoy your life too. That's all it's for. That's only three things you can do with it. Wow. John Deloney, that's good, incredible man. What a neat lady. Yeah. Very powerful. Way to end the day. Love it. Way to end this hour. James Childs is our producer. Kelly Daniels, our associate producer. I'm Dave Ramsey. We'll be back before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.